Hello guys, this is uh, Nofrak Limit from the Octagon again. Today I will be commenting a final match of Mangeras 4 online tournament between two best players in the field. Uh, that's uh, Apoka uh, Dionysid, also known as Ktoto, and Piotrek, uh, the champion of the last tournament. And both those guys, they are actually on the top of the leaderboard. They fully deserve to, f to be here in this place in the final as they won the most games uh, in which they played so yeah uh, I think this is going to be the game on the highest level uh, I really expect to see some sparks and as you see already uh, Dion is it Epoca Toto he will be playing uh, Saint Celestine and uh, Piotrek haven't really decided but we will see in a second okay so he will be playing uh, Vaughn uh, so very two powerful warlords really competitive game as it's expected for the final and let's have a look quickly on the planets uh, there is a lot of resources here not too many cards so the cards will be essential Piotrick immediately milligans his hand it, not even thinking too long about that he didn't even spend one minute thinking about it uh, Toto is saying that his hand is stupidly unaffected but fun. Very hard decision. Okay, so still thinking. Uh, let's just look on the victory condition on the icons. The, the soonest victory condition it's on the plan number four with the red icons. Uh, the next uh, victory condition is plan number five with the green icons. Uh, so it looks like a very long game, which is always good. Uh, Dionysus will keep his hand, so we are about to start. The initiative is with, with Piotrek on the van, and he decides to play support of cost reducing Fortress Monastery limited card uh, for zero resources and respond quickly with Holy Chapel for zero resources, adding the fate icons by sacrificing the support. Okay, so the guy started. Piotrek uh, uh, deploys another support, te Teleportarium, for one with reduced cost and uh, a poker toto is deploying another holy chopper so two holy chapels right now uh Catechin outpost deployed by piotrek all those resources with the reduced cost is really low cost uh, high value cards i would say for such a small amount uh free support straight away and here uh, you can see uh, one of the unique uh, supports, so uh, Agrarus Preachings, uh, after your opponent wins a battle, exhaust the support, the target planet with the enemy unit to rally six non-elite Astra Militarium unit. Attach it to the planet and when the combat phase ends, deploy that unit at the planet and reduce its cost by two if you cannot discard it. Uh, really interesting, uh, this support will definitely help here in the early stage, it's always a superb thing. And a quick response from from the Piotrek here, he's actually uh, playing the Siege Masters uh, event, <laughs> so he will uh, exhaust the target enemy support and rally 8 card for support card and add it to your hand. So. Uh, this agrarian preaching support won't be used in the first stage. Uh, really, really cool uh, <laughs> uh, play. He's actually looking for more supports right now, so yeah, there will be plenty deployed straight away in the first round. Uh, I would say, uh, really good. The guys had the both both of them. They had really good cards. And Piotrek decided to take the hands. And this is the question we were asking before do he need to show? Because the card doesn't say reveal the card, but obviously uh, we discussed it before. And, uh, you know, and we need to really be sure that he's digging out the support. So uh, just for the sake of, of, of being fair, he should really reveal the hand, I mean, the card, even if the card doesn't say reveal it. And this this is also the question of this many discussions between the players before, and I think the design of the card is haven't hasn't really specified that, but uh, it should really be, and as we as we as we discussed and and, and settled the rule, it needs to be revealed. So from that event, 
uh, as you see, uh, Piotrek already digged out his uh, signature support, Citadel of Vami, and uh, this cannot be targeted by enemy card abilities for the purpose of the card effects this card is uh, considered as a cost 4. After support card enters play, treat it as a printed text as blank, blank until the end of the round and remove 1 damage from support card. So, really cool. Uh, Guardsman tokens coming into play from this effect. A really cool move. I didn't expect to see that. And obviously those tokens, they will be very useful for uh, for him to to fight against the Varn, getting all those single damaged uh, to his supports. Obviously that unit have the right to attack. And the first for one. And that's what he does. He's actually deciding to move this damage to Eldritch Council to discard this this support, and this unit will retreat right now to deploy four guardsmen tokens on planet number one. Totally overwhelming the battle of this planet. Vaughn quickly decides to retreat, and yes, the planet ability triggered will allow. Uh, him to remove the damage, but he decides to do not. Uh, there's no point as this unit will need to be sacrificed. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, really cool round. So you could see a lot of tricks. Uh, we're going to turn number three right now. Uh, initiative back to Piotrek. Uh, I was really thinking, oh, is he in a really good shape uh, after deploying all those supports? By the way, uh, the Kotota from Apoka uh, played this 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 battle and triggered all those effects. Now I can see he have a really good force to play a snowball game. He's already uh, holding a one red icon material planet, so he needs another two to win this game. Uh, Piotrek needs to see that, but he decides to deploy the unit on plan number 4 with the reduced cost to keep dominating the command. Uh, so, doesn't look, well he has 7 resources, 7 cards, he definitely have something to be able to stop uh, Kototo on one of those planets, but we will see how the action is going to go. Uh, first planet is the also uh, the, the green icon which uh, allows uh, to, to bring uh, additional two guardsmen tokens from the troop transport support. So the first planet is more dangerous for him to, to, to fight on but uh, we will see, uh, you know, uh, Kitoto doesn't hold any, any strong cord. Uh, strong point green icons yet, so even if he will win, 
the planet number one, the planet number three, it won't be the straight on uh, victory condition. So it's all down to planet number four, five. If only if Piotrek will be able to defend uh, this plan number two, but he decides to change his deployment again before the Ktoto from Apoka makes his move. <laughs> it's the second time. <laughs> Another mobile unit tactical squad. Uh, I guess it makes more sense for him to deploy it there. Uh, okay. Mm, turn to, to, to do an it. There was something involved, uh, but finally he decides to deploy Heralding Herubim, a great signature unit which allows him to shift it after the commitment of the Warlord, and the response from Piotrek is uh, to deploy that Clearhead Refugee which he was uh, able to uh, draw after the death of the Tactical Squad. So another uh, good support in his pile and Zealous Counters, uh, great uh, unit uh, deployed on plan number two. Uh, teleportarium used to move over that tactical squad, so plan number four was in fact the Piotrek's target. And now uh, you see why he did such a thing right after the Unizet uh, passed uh, the deploy. He was able to deploy the Crypt of St. Camilla, probably because he was afraid of another squiggy bumbin. Uh, so uh, all, this all this movement with tactical squads to just use the Teleportarium and pass the turn was to protect that deployment. And now Dionysus already com 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 comments that he is instantly regretting this. And Crypt of San Camilla will be triggered to deploy that Raven Guard Speeder 4 cost unit for nothing on the first planet. So uh, it's really nasty having a flying unit uh, with divine ability. It's just basically one support uh, on every two attack, uh, one damage as the flying, reducing it by two, by half. Uh, and another tactical squad deployed on planet number two. And one more uh, card in reserve over there. So both planets equally defended uh, just uh, in case. Uh, so not really sure where the Piotrek is going to decide to land. But I will be guessing plan number two will be his choice to defend this Void Pirate bonus and tactical squad. Not really sure what's the card in reserve. But uh, definitely the Raven, uh, Raven Speeder. Uh, is able to, to deal some damage to the Saint Celestine on plan number one, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see yes, Apoka to go right there to gain those three icons, but as it turns out, the Piotrek decides to go there as well, so it will be interesting battle, uh, the Immolator obviously triggering its effect and dealing two, one damage to two units, uh, which both goes on the Crypt of St. Camilla, uh, putting the one fate icons. Primal Hole in Piotrek's hand will allow him to draw three cards after committing to the same planet as the enemy warlord. So, shields being scrapped by three cards being drawn. Uh, Duke of Debris will help uh, to draw some cards uh, as he winning the command on plan number one. Uh, Okay, so he's constantly boosting his hand with extra cards and he's winning the command on three planets. Uh, Apoka totally dominated as the plan number two is a tie. He doesn't get any command over there. Uh, it looks pretty nasty right now for him, but definitely the battle won't be the problem as planet one is the green icon. He will be able to uh, trigger the effect and Piotrek decides to play the signature event uh, Siege Masters to to tap the troop transport. <laughs> it's funny because the troop transport doesn't need to really be exhausted to, to trigger it. So it's a, it's a misplay, it's a mistake. I think Piotrek, yeah, uh, they, he just realized that. So uh, yeah, he, he moves it back. Uh, this play doesn't really have uh, any effect. So he's not using it uh, now. Mm. Okay. As you see, he is triggering the cathedral outpost to boost two attack to his uh, 
uh, Raven God Speeder and quickly attacks this uh, emulator for five. Two of those uh, uh, will be shielded by uh, the preemptive barrage being uh, scrapped. So, yeah, it has three health points. So, this shield doesn't really help. The guys, they already made some mistakes. I just noticed the first of all, uh, the yeah, so <laughs> okay, Zealous Cantus will add the fate support. Uh, okay, so the Apoka didn't actually took back this didn't took back this uh, um, shield and Piotrek forgot about taking back the resource for the event he played so even in the final game there are some mistakes here uh, being done but it's easy to comment from the third party after the game uh, uh, probably there's a match to fit there's a lot to, to, to think about so uh, let's just focus on the game uh, Vaughn is attacking the guardsman token uh, not the warlord uh, probably he will try to 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 stay and fight here uh, that will cost him a lot to to play uh, and now the preemptive barrage has been moved to table to shield that for two really powerful cards used as a shield and the troop transport is being used to deploy two guardsmen tokens right now so a lot of small units here and they're attacking the, 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 the land speeder, uh, the guard uh, raven speeder here for one, uh, dealing another damage to Crypt of St. Camilla and uh, Clear had Refugee uh, actually, yeah, uh, as the next one. So Dionysa doesn't have any actions. Mm, Piotrek is thinking about his play. Uh, it's be it will be really hard to stay on this planet but uh, if he will allow him to to get it straight away the next planet will be the winning condition and as you see he will be in trouble so i'm really interested to what he will be able to pull here and Dionysus is asking about the actions and uh, Piotrek is still thinking what he will do is definitely the hard choice here uh, he doesn't have any action, so we will go for the next combat round. And uh, the guys need to now decide if they will stay. I have no doubt about Apokak Toto. Uh, he will continue the battle, but Piotrek, now he has a really tough choice to think about uh, because to continue the fight over here will really just bloody his all supports. Uh, and that means trouble, uh, but giving away this planet also means trouble. Uh, so I'm not really sure um, how he will play this out. Uh, what is the best choice? And also, uh, considering that the effect of that planet will allow uh, Dionysus to draw three cards uh, as the player with the last cards. So, <laughs> tough choices all over. <laughs> Piotrek decides to stay, uh, same as Dionysus, so a very interesting battle will be going on right now. Uh, it's the first strike and uh, Raven Guard Speeder will kill one of those Guardsmen tokens. There's no actions from both sides. Another token attacks the Speeder and one damage goes to the Monastery Fortress destroying the support. Uh, no actions from Apokip Toto and this wow signature even the unit to used to shield one of those guardsmen tokens so uh, Toto recognizes here how important it is to keep them alive and just keep dealing those damages to support and now another indomitable card uses a shield whoa that's a really interesting play here and uh, Obviously, some hard choices for Piotrek right now, as he needs to decide which which support will be 
scrapped uh, Saint Camilla uh, used to to uh, discard, same as Catechum Outposts, and another attack probably will take off the Teleportarium. Indeed, right now Dionys would have no actions. Clearhut Refugee used before it probably dies to boost uh, uh, the HP of the uh, Raven God speed by 4 at its own cost. And the attack will go on to Vaughn from Saint Celestine, and I believe one of those damages will be moved on to uh, one of the support, possibly the Cathedral Outpost. Uh, yes, indeed. So, this ground battle, uh, Piotrek wasn't really able to do much, but he bloodied it all his support and the question is he did we will continue uh, this battle the situation looks very tricky right now i am really uh really see that apoka is taking over the initiative in this game uh, on this very moment all those supports just disappeared and interestingly uh Piotrek decides to keep uh, attacking and keep killing those guardsmen tokens and now another attack on the raven guards uh, kills off the last support and another attack to guardsmen token there's no more cards and no more shields now straightforward attacks for one to guard speeder one uh, another one probably on the guard speeder as well yes and the Saint Celestine decides to attack to the speeder, uh, which uh, basically brings it down to one. Uh, so three damage on the seven HP units. Uh, so it's going to be a tough fight for a poker. Let me just do the math. Uh, remaining uh, HP six on the warlord and four on the speeder. So it gives us ten. That's three attacks, five attacks from five attacks reduced by two, six, seven, eight. Well, unfortunately, uh, Apoka did the math as well, and he just noticed he's not able to win the battle here. So, uh, Piotr cannot really uh, trigger the battle ability of this planet, but he was absolutely essential to win the battle even off the cost of all the support to just basically uh, to just basically uh, wow <laughs> okay so this time uh, Apoka was able to trigger the ability of the support and he targeted plan number three and deployed the Dominion Eugenia with uh, reducing her cost by two so a really cool draw with really powerful unit on planet number three uh absolutely stunning <laughs> now Vaughn uh he prevented uh his doom he kept this game running he lost all his support that was the price he paid but uh, uh he have nine cards in his hand uh, which is pretty good. I see only two cards in his hands, so he will really need to draw some cards. Probably that's why he targeted this uh, planet number three to deploy that Eugenia over there to gain free command icons, and possibly that will be his deployment as well to go over there. Uh, as he have only two cards, he really needs to gain some more to deploy some units. Uh, as you see, uh, Inquisitorial Fortress, a uh, really powerful card as a sacrifice, you can route the unit to enemy HQ. Uh, and quick response this time, uh, Siege Masters played again to exhaust this support this time it will work so uh, no uh, danger from from here 
and also does allow to search the eight cards for for the support card as well i uh, really like this signature event it's really cool and powerful and uh, piotr is digging for his cards to to get another support uh, let's see what he will draw and there it is a uh, cathedral outpost that goes into his hand so good indeed uh, he spent some time thinking about it so probably there were or more supports over there and his deployment move will be a rogue trader uh, deployed on the last planet uh, keep dominating the command oh, I guess uh, he needs some resources and now the signature attachment deployed them on the warlord adding a 1 HP and allowing to reduce the damage from the supports and the next two deployments are reduced cost to cathedral outposts a uh, really cool move and uh, he used all of his resources to to do that but he will massively uh, help him to to win some battles here so yeah nice play from piotr uh you know not having those cards for a poker uh, toto it definitely hurts him here he played so well but varn is such a powerful warlord even after this 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 really bloody battle he's been able to to bring it back with really good throw so quickly uh, he does have two very dangerous supports right now and dominating the command on the, on at least two planets and if he will go for planet number one as i believe that will be his target this is going to be a real struggle uh not really sure what do and is it will do but plan number two uh, is dominated right now uh he needs those cards so but he really i don't really sure uh very hard to say for me so the both players decides about the commitment and decision has been done uh so let's see uh, Duan Izzet uh, decides to go for planet number two as I was expecting and Piotrek decides to go for planet one to secure the bonus uh, with the resource and avoid pirates and uh, Herald Herobim was moved onto planet number three from its reaction Duke of Debris will allow to uh, dig out some cards but because of this signature unit being moved on plan number three now the command was being tied up over there so for Piotrek is only plan number one plan number four which allows him to take two cards and three resources in the end with the duke of debris bonus uh which is not really bad and uh for uh poke toto is only two cards only or as much as two cards so Planet number one, there's no more actions from uh, Dew and Izzet. Uh, it's all down to Deep Strike and uh, Deep Strike Valkyries pattern jump pack, giving the tactical squad the flying keyword. Uh, probably useful here. And uh, as this unit will be uh, targeted by the attack or the Warlord right now, he will definitely boost the attack of one of his units and the tactical squad itself will receive another two attacks uh, and another two attacks make it six count in total Dewan is it realized there's no chance he instantly discarding his unit knowing that he will die so quick quick response and uh, Piotrek is able now to trigger the battle ability of the first planet and he decides to deploy two token units on planet number three uh, to, uh, to kind of secure the next planet as he believes there is no option to defend that planet with the Eugenia and she will attack right now uh, for free uh, does Piotrek have any shields? He will try to defend it here. He does two shields from Prima Hall. Uh, and obviously, uh, 
Apocalypse Doctor just said he did. He forgot to trigger the. Uh, he forgot to trigger the the support from uh, from the last battle, which Piotrek won as well. So he will intend to do right now. Now, on the plan number four, uh, to look for some units. Mm. No, he actually changed his mind and he targeted plan number two. Uh, so he's searching for six cards to do so. And uh, heralding Herobrim, that will be the unit which will go uh, into play after the uh, combat phase. So, really cool, two shields. Mm. I believe there should be one damage on this, this on this siege squad, but not important. As the ah oh no, this one was shifted on the support. Now another one shifted on the support. All the units are ready, and Piotrek quickly uh, retreat his unit. And using the signature attachment to remove those two damage from the Catechon outpost supports. Uh, which is completely right to do. So we ended up with with the siege unit surviving the the attack, but not really doing much. Obviously, some guardsmen tokens uh, are dead. But now the situation turns uh, around again, and. Uh, Uh, he decides to use the planned ability to move this hero beam uh, around back to the HQ and boost it by 2 attack 2 HP. So uh, both players have no actions. We're going to go to the next round. And uh, now uh, Kyoto, it sits on the five cards. Uh, Piotrek uh, deploying another copy of the Clear Heart Refugee. And uh, this time, uh, Akhtoto uh, is putting out the Eldritch Council uh, support card with no cost, uh, le leaving him with seven resources uh, behind. Gives him plenty of the options. Plan number one looks pretty safe with Elgenia and those units around. Uh, he pretty much secures that planet here. Uh, however, Piotrek looks very solid on the next planet, so there is a possibility of us uh, going all the way down to the last planet to see someone's winning this game. Uh, it's really interesting so far. Uh, the initiative uh, uh, and the advantage goes from one side to another. I was really thinking the Vaughn is going to get that very early with all those supports, and then after the battle on the first planet, everything just changed dramatically. And in next battle, he was able to, to pull it back, but now uh, it looks like Celestine is gaining the advantage again. But we are about to see their deployments, so everything uh, possibly uh, will be decided uh, very soon. Some very important decisions to make uh, at this stage of the game, I believe. Uh, this round and the next one will be absolutely crucial. So uh, guys will probably take a little bit more time thinking about the deployment. And uh, after some time, uh, Piotrek decides to deploy 100 Librarian. And this Librarian will go on the plan number one. Uh, very interesting choice. Um, And another copy of Inquisitorial Fortress uh, being deployed. Uh, that's a very dangerous, uh, very dangerous uh, situation right now for for Piotrek. Uh, in the final battle, those two cards they can basically decide about everything here, and he decides to deploy Iron Hands Tech Marine to. Uh, dominate the command by gaining four command icons for every unit. Uh, he will have six against four 
on the first planet and <laughs> I am just uh, saying I know the pain of playing against two fortresses here uh, as that was the exact situation I had against that Saint Celestine in a semi-final and it wasn't really a pleasant experience for myself and I can really just imagine what's going in the Piotrex head right now uh, uh, so he decides to use uh, to put the emulator on plan number two and using the Eldritch Council to look for the three top cards, he's moving one into his hand, some on the bottom. Piotrek doesn't really wait, he deploys promotion on the planet number two on this tactical squad, so he's right now dominating the command on all of the planets again. Uh, that's his game. Uh, he is recognizing the needs of uh, this need of basically drawing those cards so all the way back for to Toto to decide about his deployment only two resources two cards left so not really much and he decides to use the fortress to route this Elgenia back to HQ that's a very surprising move I don't really understand why he doing this uh, basically sacrificing support to pull back his unit it seems to be a very weird, I don't really understand, it looks like Piotrek doesn't really understand as well. We are all surprised, but I guess there is some plan here, which we are really not getting here. A Void Pirate being played by Piotrek on Nas planet, uh, making it really, uh, really uh, profitable right now. And that's it from deployment move from Duan Izzard. As I see the command DL being flipped for Piotrek, that, that means that he is done with deployment move as well, deciding quickly uh, where it's gonna go. And uh, Apoka Toto is thinking about it now, and I believe it's changing a lot uh, here and uh, probably instantly regretting of, of this move. I mean, he retreated the Eugenia from planet number one, uh, possibly, well, we shouldn't be scared about this librarian as, as the fortresses are there. Uh, most of the units will come exhausted. Uh, however, there are two Catachan outposts uh, supports which probably will allow to kill it instantly and uh, first planet is not the winning condition so I believe he may to go for planet number two uh, to uh, fight over there and uh, yeah I am not really sure right now but uh, definitely I'm seeing Piotr going for planet number one um, and winning this battle very easily. Uh, hmm. So quickly the situation has changed and uh, um, this move uh, very surprising. Uh, Dion is it now is deciding where to go with his warlord. Either it's going to be plan number one or plan number two. <laughs> it's going to be plan number one. This is all <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. I don't believe so. He didn't pull that Eugenia to, to, to just bring it back there exhausted. It doesn't make any sense. So probably he just gave up uh, this battle straight away. Probably he was thinking about the initiative uh, and those Catachan outpost supports. And the next battle uh, will be with his initiative on this side. So probably what this is all is about. Uh, uh, he's still thinking about the commitment. Uh, not really happy about what he sees. Uh, there is absolutely uh, dominating command on all of those three planets. Will give a lot of cards to Piotrek to potentially bring uh, more support into the game uh, so yeah I'm pretty sure Vaughn is gaining the advantage here back again 
and you can see if amount of time uh, Kitoto is taking to, to, to decide about the commitment here it's definitely uh, tells him about how difficult is the situation how quickly that developed I mean uh, if he deploy on planet number two he could move those two Herobeam Herald units onto planet number three to even the command so if Saint Celestine will decide to land on planet number two he will even the bonus from planet number three so there is absolutely no need for him to go over there and uh, he will simply just give up the, the planet number one and uh, try to secure uh, the planet number two uh, which allows him to move uh, and trigger the battle ability and move the Elgenia uh, over but he will he decided so let's see mm, it took a little bit of time and he goes for planet number three that's really surprising I <laughs> I didn't really see that happening uh, obviously and Piotrek goes for plan number two uh, he knew straight away that uh, Apoka Kitoto uh, will not go in plan number one it didn't make any sense and he, he, in his head it was only that Elgenia uh, is going to move on two now it's even weirder as it is because uh, <laughs> basically <laughs> He's not only about to win the planet number one, uh, he also automatically securing the, the victory condition on planet number two. So uh, that fortress being discarded and Herobeam now is moving to planet number two, giving up the planet. Wow, I, I don't really, I don't really get it. No, no sorry guys, but I'm just not getting it. Uh, as uh, so, okay clearly uh, Dewan is it now is rethinking that move uh, with the Herobims uh, where are they supposed to go it's a very difficult situation obviously he recognized the fact that Piltrek will win the battle here uh, I mean he will win the game if he will gain the plan number one and then allow himself to, to stay with so many units in plan number two and win that battle as well that's game over so uh really uh really just he doesn't know what to do in this situation i guess it's uh it's a difficult choice to make and uh yeah it's 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 get complicated i think it misplayed a little bit in this situation uh uh, but Herobeam decides to go for planet number two so just totally giving away uh, the first planet uh, the librarian attacks the the guardsman token killing it instantly and now uh, support being done okay all right damage shifted so uh, guardsman decides to retreat and now uh, the support will be triggered that's why okay he let him to win the first battle uh, to trigger the support uh, probably he's hoping to to pull uh, a good unit from 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 his pile of food to, 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 it was a cheap cost i believe so it depends on what he will draw here uh, but Piotrek will be uh, will be able to trigger the battle ability here and boost one of his units by 2-2 two, two. Uh, if it's just going to be librarian uh, it's going to be very powerful unit to to be dealt with uh, I don't really think he will boost that as there is a fortress in play so he will probably boost something else like this iron hand just to uh kind of spread out the amount of the attacks he have but he have so many units over there right now and chimeras tokens as well uh Cathogen outpost will definitely allow him to 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 boost it even more uh really difficult uh situation here and uh as you see unfortunately octagon failed us or uh <laughs> Piotrek just have been disconnected here and this is really awful 
are completely outrageous that Octagon haven't fixed that bug uh, after so many months uh, of knowing about the issue, haven't done anything about it. This is completely ruining this final game. Uh, really sorry about that for the guys <laughs> and sorry for you as well for wasting your time to watching this video uh, but I don't think uh, wow okay as we discussed this uh, with the guys they will be not really uh, replaying the game Piotr is, is, is he lost it uh, completely he's just been outraged by the whole situation here uh, uh, I am I'm trying to analyze the situation as it's really complex here and it's really complicated. Uh, what could possibly be done? Uh, obviously Piotrek will win now the battle, uh, trigger the ability, uh, add some damage. Uh, he he's still have the Captain Outpost support, he still have Clear Hut Refugee. Obviously he will lose those uh, Rogue Pirates, uh, Void Pirates, Rogue Traders on plan number three and Saint Celestine probably will be able to trigger another support from the ability but what will happen the most importantly now uh, okay mm, Apoka will be able to deal some damage from the immolator and stuff well but he will not survive if Piotrek will boost his warlord with both Catechon outposts, that's it, the tank will be open and the hero beams won't survive the attacks here the, after this round the planet will be completely clear and I don't feel, I don't believe that any of those units will survive and uh, even if uh, Apoka Toto will be able to to uh, move the Eugenia back to HQ after winning plan number three uh, what Piotrek uh, can do uh, easily uh, it's just killing off in the next round before it's gonna land so uh, as the support the fortress is unable to to route the warlord obviously the Catholic outpost could really just boost the attack on this unit bringing it to six and uh, okay there is a possibility of Apocactoto just bringing the unit now from the support depends what he will be able to draw maybe that could change the battle here I uh, don't really know uh, in my opinion uh, Varn uh, had the advantage here and he secured the this planet uh, he has uh, seven cards in his hand he will definitely be able to trigger the ability of the planet which will allow him to to move the iron hand or of one of the units onto planet number three I don't really know. Uh, it's very complicated, but in general, I have a feeling that Piotrek, uh, <laughs> Piotrek win the game. Uh, it was a very difficult choice, a very weird move from from Apocalyptoto to use this fortress to to, to move the Algenia back. Uh, probably it was essential for him to be done, but uh, still, uh, the situation doesn't really look good with two resources, two cards. Uh, uh, please put your comments guys I would like really to see your opinion about this situation uh, I think we could really discuss this as there will be no replay on this final game and we could possibly end up with no winner in this tournament it was such a good tournament all, all the way over uh, it's a very shame it's actually f uh, finishing in that way uh, I definitely gonna, I'm definitely going to go and put some nasty words on the support page of the Octagon uh, I almost did r withdraw my uh, my subscription from 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 here uh, for the same reason uh, but I decided to keep it there as this game is giving me some fun they definitely deserve to have some fun but uh, <laughs> again I'm just pissed off and uh, you know it's, it's really hard to, to, to keep accepting that no one is able to fix that bug uh, I'm really sorry again. Uh, I try to do my best to, to record this game. Uh, I hope uh, that you enjoyed it. Uh, as you see, uh, the situation has got a little complicated. But again, uh, I, I will love to see your comments under the video. And thanks for watching, guys. And I promise to, to be a little bit more uh, active and post some more videos in the future. So thanks again, and see you soon.